Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is Ruby Snack number 24. This is a follow-up episode to the previous episodes about Froala. In this episode, we are going to upgrade to version 2. Thanks so much for the folks at Froala for reaching out to me and letting me know that version 2 has come out and there is a migration guide available that'll help you upgrade from version 1 to version 2. Also in this episode, I'm going to install Froala as a plugin instead of a gem. The gem is a little bit behind. It's not quite ready for version 2, although I'll show you how you can still use the gem. So instead, we're going to install Froala as a plugin. Then we'll review those changes in version 2 and update our code from the previous episodes to use version 2. If you'd like to code along, all you need is a Rails app created. I do highly recommend that you watch episode 22 and episode 23 so that you'll see what I mean when I talk about updating to version 2. If you would still like to use the gem, you need to set the exact version in your gem file to use version 2. So it'll be gem, WYSIWYG, Rails, and then that particular version. Now on to the meat of the episode, we're going to install Froala as a plugin. You will need to download the files from froala.com WYSIWYG editor v2. You will need the font awesome gem, so if it's not already installed, be sure to put that into your gem file and bundle, and then require font awesome in your application CSS. Let's head on over to the website where we'll hit download, then you can see the prices. Right now we're just going to download and use it as a free version. And so we'll hit OK. And now we will go ahead and open up that zip file. And you'll unzip it using whatever program that you use. And I'm just going to unzip it onto my desktop. I'll go ahead and look at these files. You can see there's a lot of stuff in here. We don't need all of it. We'll check out the JS. We definitely need that file right there. With, and then the plugins. There's a couple plugins we're using. So we'll take a few things from there. Now let's check out the CSS and we're going to use just the min CSS. If you plan to make any changes to the look of it, you would go ahead and put in the full CSS. That's easier to edit. And then here's some other plugins that we'll be using as well. Next, we need to copy the files into the app. So copy from wherever you have the Froala files into your app, into the assets folder, and then either JavaScripts or style sheets for whichever one we are copying. First, we'll copy the main JS file. Then we'll copy the main style sheets. And you can see we're doing two style sheets at once within the brackets. Then we'll copy in the JS files for the plugins and then the CS files for those plugins. To save time, I copied that slide into a document and then took out those dollar signs. And now I'm just gonna paste it all at once and everything's copied. Let's double check by going into our app into the assets folder, into JavaScripts, and yep, there's our new file. And then we will now check out style sheets and see all those new files. Let's take a look at the application CSS and our required tree will actually load all those CSS files for us. But it's not the case for JavaScript because the Froala editor min.js needs to load before the other two. So we do need to specify those as requires in our application JS file. Back in our editor, let's go to the application JS and we will include that right above require tree and save. Now we're going to review the changes in version 2 by checking out this lovely resource that Froala has put together, Migrate from version 1. First up, we see that initialization has changed from simply editable to the more specific Froala editor. So let's copy that new code there and go into where we have our WYSIWYG, and in our case it's Views, Crew Members, Form, and we will scroll to the bottom and replace editable with Froala editor. Taking a look back at the documentation, we'll scroll on down. They've changed some of their toolbar buttons. So let's go through these. We do have insert ordered list, so we'll change that. And insert unordered list as well, so we'll do that one. Oh, I switched those, but that's okay. As long as we have both of them, that's good. Now we need to change format block. 
These are not quite in order, but these are how I'm seeing them come up. So just make sure to go through these bit by bit for whatever ones you've chosen. Insert link has changed. We'll change that one as well. I think we have it now. So we'll scroll on down. They've made a couple of things plugins that used to be core features. So especially the image and link plugins you'll want to pay attention to. And now we'll move on down to options and they're in alphabetical order, moving on down. Buttons, buttons has changed. Now it's called toolbar buttons. So we'll copy that. Put it in there. Just to be more specific. And now let's scroll on down. Pretty much a lot of things have changed. So if you have a lot of different specifications and configurations, you want to look at this list pretty carefully. So we'll go on down and inline mode has changed. It's now toolbar inline. Now the default is now false. So we don't really need that line, but let's go ahead and change it anyway. And oh, and then let's do height min first. Get that out of the way and save. And now toolbar in line as well. Again, you can simply remove this line if you like. I'll just leave it for now. And save. And we're done. The image upload to S3 has not changed. So you can leave that be. And you can see there's lots of new options on some method changes. So be sure to look at the full document. Here's everything together to see everything that changed. I'm actually very excited by all these changes. It just means the Froala folks are really thinking about what's best for this WYSIWYG and making it even better. Thanks so much for watching. If you are not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, be sure to click on that big red subscribe button right there. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below. I've been getting a lot of comments these days. Keep them coming. If you are not on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com so you can get more Ruby Thursday awesomeness in your inbox. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and see you soon.